This is an instructional video going over the basic techniques to be used for fracture reduction and application of a well-molded cast utilizing the distal radius fracture model. So we start with application of the stockinette in preparation of casting later. This can be then folded down to allow for better manipulation of the model. X-ray imaging reveals the fracture in the displaced position. You can see wires in place demonstrating the degree of fracture displacement and angulation. At the start of the simulation, in order to reduce the fracture, the angulation must be over accentuated, the deformity must be recreated, and at this point, distal translation on the fracture can affect an adequate reduction. This can be confirmed with fluoroscopic imaging. Again, noting the near anatomic position of the fracture. With the fracture reduced, gentle pressure on the dorsal aspect of the hand will hold the fracture reduced. However, any release of this pressure will allow some internal mechanisms to cause the fracture to re-displace. But again, very little force is required to hold the fracture in the reduced position because of the intact periosteal hinge. With an assistant stabilizing the arm, long arm cast can be applied by first applying a webral. Again, care is taken to hold the arm and fracture in the reduced position during the casting procedure. The edges of the cast are well padded. An initial short arm cast is applied. This can be either fiberglass or plaster of Paris. With the cast applied, gentle molds are then placed at the volar aspect of the fracture site, just proximal to or at the fracture site, and distal to the fracture site, creating a three-point type of bending mold uh, in the cast. The reduction can be checked and the molding in the cast checked with fluoroscopic imaging. The hypothenar eminence uh, and thenar eminences of the hands make good tools to create a nice broad mold so as to prevent direct pressure points uh, of the cast onto the arm during this procedure. Again, fluoroscopic imaging can be used to confirm reduction of the fracture with the temporary short arm cast. The short arm cast can then be extended to a long arm cast if desired to help provide additional stabilization to the fracture site. This part of the cast should be well padded around all bony prominences. Care should be taken not to change the elbow flexion angle during 
application of this cast. After this, the stockinette is rolled down around the edges of the cast. And the final so-called Hollywood roll can be applied.